Hello everyone, let us continue with our second chapter mathematical methods and up till now what we have seen is uh, what are scalars vectors. We have also seen addition and subtraction of vectors. Today what we are going to do is we are going to talk about multiplication of vectors over here. Now let me tell you, you can have a scalar multiplied by a vector your answer will also will be a vector over here. So let us take an example. Let us say a scalar quantity 4 and a vector you have as 2i plus 3j plus 4k. Now when you multiply this, what you will get is 8i plus 12j plus 16k. So a scalar and a vector gave you a vector. When you multiply two scalars, you will be getting a scalar only. So if I multiply 4 and 6, both are scalar quantities, you will get 24, which is again a scalar. Now we'll come to a, now we'll come to a kind where we will be multiplying a vector with a vector. Now this might give us a scalar quantity or it might give us a vector quantity. It depends upon which method of multiplication you are using. So there are two kinds of product that we can take. One is scalar product to get scalar output and other one is vector product to get a vector output. This is also called, uh, called as dot product and this one is also called as cross product. So we'll be seeing these two things in detail in the next slides. So let us go ahead. So the first one that we'll talk about is scalar product or which is also called as dot product. Let us first define this. So this is the definition of scalar product that we have. The scalar product or dot product of two non-zero vectors P and Q is defined as the product of the magnitudes of the two vector. So if I write it as P dot Q vector then this is equal to product of their magnitudes let us say p and q denotes the magnitude of these two vectors and the cosine of the angle theta between the two vectors so if theta is the angle between p and q this will be multiplied by cos theta so if i have angle if i have vector p over here and vector q over here and there is this angle theta between them then the dot product or scalar product is given by pq cos theta hope you all understood this now we will check out the characteristics of the scalar products or dot product and this will be used to solve the sum so let us try and pay attention to this the first one says that states that uh, the scalar product of two vectors is equivalent to the product of magnitude of one vector with the magnitude of component of the other vector in the direction of the first. Now let me tell you what this means. So if I have vector p into vector q then I can write this equal to be product of magnitude of one vector. So let us say p or we can also start with q. Okay, so there are two ways of writing this. So let us check out the first one. So magnitude of one vector which is P and we have to multiply this with the magnitude of the component of the other vector. So the other vector is Q or is a component se humko multiply karna as such that that component is in the direction of the first. So let me tell you if I have Q over here I can resolve this into two components this q along x axis and q along y axis humne ye resolution of vectors mein dekha tha right and this qx ka value is nothing but q cos theta ye bhi humne find kiya tha so if you complete this triangle take cos of this so cos of theta will be adjacent which is qx divided by hypotenuse which is q so i can write qx is equal to q cos theta right now this component qx or q cos theta is in line with this. 
okay so i have this q cos theta which is in the direction of the first one so i can write over here q cos theta so let us check out what we have done so we have taken the product of the magnitude of one vector which is p over here with the magnitude of the component of other vector in the direction of the first so the component of other vector which one we have selected q cos theta why because that one is in direction of p okay so we got this likewise you can start with vector q also the other form so for this q if i q if i write q as it is and let us <coughs> resolve this vector p into two components so there will be one component like this and another component like this now these two components should be perpendicular to each other like it was there in the case for q right so i'll have one component over here so if this angle is theta always remember theta ke baju wala jo side rehta hai that will be cos theta so hypotenuse cos theta so hypotenuse is p and this is uh, uh, we already had this vector q aur humne iske path mein humne kya find kiya p cos theta so we can write q into p cos theta which is again equal to nothing but p q cos theta so this is also one way of writing the dot product hope you all understood this let us check out the next characteristic the next characteristic next characteristic is uh, that dot product obeys commutative law of multiplication it obeys commutative law of multiplication now what is commutative law let us check it with this formula so commutative law means p dot q is equal to q dot p right how you can say this p dot q is nothing but p q cos theta and q dot p will be nothing but q p cos theta and this is one in the same right so therefore what we have is we have this over here third one third characteristics is scalar product also obeys something called as distributive law so distributive law of multiplication what is that so if i have a vector p which is multiplied by q plus r so we can uh, open this bracket and we can write it in this form p into q plus p into r and this is nothing but the distributive law of multiplication hope you all understood this let us talk about the next character this characteristic talks about the three special cases first case is when you have theta equal to 0 so in that case what will have p dot q is equal to p q cos of 0 right and cos of 0 is 1 so this will be nothing but p q right from this what we can also write is vector i into i will be equal to vector j into j this is equal to vector k into k now these are also vectors right i and j are also vectors and between them the angle is zero so uh, the, it will be left with only multiplication of the magnitudes and since they are unit vector unka magnitude kitna hota hai one so all of them will result in the value of one over here let us check the second uh, special case yahan pe you got pq cos of 180 we all know that cos of 180 is minus 1 so this will be nothing but minus of pq okay and lastly if you have theta equal to 90 so in that case what will happen this will be equal to 0 so the scalar product does not exist or you can say it is 0 when the angle between two vectors is 90 degree from this we can also write it as i dot i sorry this i dot j these are having angle 90 degree between them because they are along x and y axis it will be equal to 0 similarly for j k and k